Hey everybody, this is Roadblock. Thanks for watching the Defense Channel. Today we're going to be doing a class edition special on naval ships, and this is one of the uh, one of the classes of ships that the United States Navy used to run that uh, I've always been really interested in. It's the Oliver Hazard Perry class of guided missile frigates. Uh, these were built for the U.S. Navy and other navies around the world. 51 of them were built for the United States Navy, while another eight of them were built in Taiwan. Six of them were built in Spain, and uh, Australia also built a couple of them for their own domestic navies. Now, at present, there are 23 of these ships on active naval rosters today in the navies of Turkey with eight of them, Spain with six, Egypt with four, Australia with four, Poland with four, and Pakistan with a single variant ship. These ships are named after Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry. Now he's known as the hero of the Battle of Lake Erie. Uh, Oliver Hazard Perry was born on August 23rd, 1785 in South Kingstown, Rhode Island. His father served as a captain in the U.S. Navy and his younger brother Matthew also achieved the rank of Commodore. Perry is known for his famous flag featuring the words, Don't give up the ship, and his famous quote, We have met the enemy and they are ours. Perry successfully defeated the British in a series of naval battles during the War of 1812 on the Great Lakes and earned himself a place as a legend in naval history. Many ships, people, and places have been named in his honor. The Oliver Hazard Perry class frigates were designed by the Bath Ironworks Shipyard in Bath, Maine, and they used the assistance of New York, renowned New York uh, naval architects Gibbs and Cox to help design the ships. Bath Ironworks is also noted for building a lot of other U.S. Navy ships, including the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers that are actually largely serving in a role uh, that the uh, Perry class frigates used to fill when they were active. But now that the United States Navy doesn't have any of the Perry class frigates in commission anymore, the literal combat ship program has turned into a waste of money, is way behind schedule. A lot of these Arleigh Burke class ships are being sent in to do roles that these frigates should be carrying out. Now, uh, the ships were built for the U.S. Navy at the Bath Ironworks Shipyard in Bath, Maine, and uh, Todd Pacific Shipyards also had two locations in San Pedro and Seattle where they built these ships at. The Perry class frigates also carry the distinction of being the first ship to be ever designed by a computer, with the work being completed in just over 18 hours. The ships were built in two variants, a long hull and a short hull. They were designed primarily to counter the Soviet submarine threat during the Cold War, but they proved to be a very versatile design and were used for many other missions, including drug interdiction roles off the coast of uh, Florida and South America and uh, escorting ships during the uh, Iran uh, tanker crisis back in the 80s. Um, now, the first ship of the class, which was the uh, USS Oliver Hazard Perry, was laid down by Bath Ironworks on June 12, 1975. The ship was completed and commissioned on December 12, 1977, and this lead ship served in the U.S. Navy for 30 years until 1997, after which the ship was mothballed and put into reserve, eventually to be pulled out and scrapped in 2006. Perry class frigates are 453 foot long, and they displace 4,100 tons. They have two gas turbine engines turning a single propeller. They can make speeds of over 29 knots and have a range of 4,500 nautical miles. These were the second class of warships that the U.S. Navy ever built with gas turbines for propulsion, and they also were the first ones that enabled the throttle to be controlled directly from the bridge. The other ships that the U.S. Navy built with gas turbine propulsion before this was the Spruance class destroyers, which was the ones that were uh, in place before the Arleigh Burks were built. Now, originally, the Oliver Hazard Perry class frigates carried a forward-mounted Mark 13 missile launcher with a 40-round magazine consisting of SM-1 missiles and harpoon missiles. These were removed in 2003 due to the United States Navy's retirement of the standard missile one. They were replaced, for the most part, with the Mark 38 Mod 2 naval gun system. And the ships also had two triple Mark 32 anti-submarine warfare torpedo tubes, a Malara 62 caliber naval gun, 
and a Phalanx SeaWiz system for close-in air defense. They also carried either an SH-60 Seahawk Lamps 3 on the long haul variants and an or an SH-2 Sea Sprite Lamps 1 on the short haul version. Now these Oliver Hazard Perry class frigates, they proved to be extremely durable ships. They saw plenty of action during the 1980s, escorting oil tankers during Operation Earnest Will and taking out Iranian oil platforms where raids were launched during Operation Praying Mantis. USS Simpson even fired a standard missile one at the Iranian gunboat Joshan, which was later sunk by naval gunfire from the cruiser USS Wainwright. In 2016, the Perry class frigate USS Thatch was sunk during a sink X exercise during RIMPAC. However, the ship took forever to sink. It was hit either directly or indirectly with the following ordnance a harpoon missile from a South Korean submarine another harpoon missile from the Australian frigate HMAS Ballarat, a Hellfire missile from an Australian SH-60 helicopter, another harpoon missile and a Maverick missile from a U.S. Maritime Patrol aircraft, another harpoon missile from the cruiser USS Princeton, additional Hellfire missiles from an American SH-60 naval helicopter, a 2,000-pound Mark 84 bomb dropped from a U.S. Navy F-A-18 Hornet, a GBU-12 Paveway laser-guided 500-pound bomb dropped from a U.S. Air Force B-52 Stratofortress strategic bomber and a Mark 48 torpedo from an unnamed U.S. Navy submarine. And after all this, the ship still took 12 hours to sink. The Perry-class frigates were also known during their time as the Ghetto Navy inside the U.S. Navy. For a long time, once the U.S. Navy started receiving their new Aegis-equipped Arleigh Burke-class multi-mission destroyers and the Aegis-equipped Ticonderoga-class cruisers, these Oliver Hazard Perry-class frigates, while demonstrating that they were very capable ships, were very largely ignored. They lost their air defense capability well over a decade ago when the standard Missile 1 was retired. They did not replace it with anything near the capability. Many of the ships saw just a cap welded over the area, and some of them were lucky enough to see a naval gun mounted in their place. In comparison, with some of the Perry-class frigates that Turkey bought, they added an 8-cell Mark 41 vertical launch system, giving them 32 long-range standard missile 2 missiles and 32 more evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, they also added an RGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missile and the ships were manned by sailors who were just as capable at problem solving and fixing mechanical issues on the fly as they were at actual naval combat. This is a fact that a lot of these sailors were proud of because unlike the newer Aegis equipped ships, the Perry class frig frigates relied a lot less on automation to achieve their goals. The Navy decommissioned the USS Simpson on uh, September 9, 2015, marking the end of the Perry class serving in the U.S. Navy. These ships were mostly mothballed and placed into reserve while several units were actually sold off to foreign navies and several more were sunk as targets during naval exercises. There was a plan proposed in 2017 to bring around eight seven or eight of the mothballed uh, Perry class frigates back into service with the U.S. Navy, mainly to take over uh, surveillance and uh, drug interdiction roles to take some of the stress off the Navy's other assets that are currently being diverted to perform these tasks, and also to uh, supply the Navy with quick access to a few uh, easy-to-get hulls that they already have to uh, increase the Navy up to the 355-ship uh, Navy that President Donald Trump has ordered. Uh, however, the cost of this was uh, deemed to be too large, and the U.S. Navy decided not to bring the uh, frigates back into commission. So, uh, this would be probably, most likely, the Perry class's last chance to see active service with the U.S. Navy. Despite the cost overruns and the failures associated with a literal combat ship program, which has turned into a complete disaster for the Navy with all kinds of propulsion problems and everything else that's going on with them right now, 
Um, it will seem more likely that we'll see a whole new design proposed and built instead or possibly a modification of an ex existing design uh, held by a domestic shipbuilder to replace these ships in the Navy's program. Now these ships also, they have their moments on the big screen in Hollywood too and in popular culture. The uh, frigate USS Reuben James was featured prominently in the Tom Clancy novel Red Storm Rising as well as in one of my favorite movies, which would be The uh, Hunt for Red October, where the USS Reuben James was actually portrayed by the USS Wadsworth because the real USS Reuben James wouldn't be built, or well, it was already built. It wouldn't be commissioned for another year after the movie came out. But uh, in the movie, the uh, USS Reuben James was the platform from which they launched the uh, fake attack to uh, appear that they were sinking the Red October and uh, so that the U.S. Navy could gain access to uh, the secrets of the Soviet Navy submarine program and uh, Sean Connery's character, Marco Ramius, could defect successfully with his officers to the United States. So, overall, the Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate, it's proven itself to be a pretty capable warship design for the time that it was designed and built, and honestly, it's still proven that today. A lot of these ships are still in service. Like I said, I think I counted 23 of them. And uh, they're not, not all of them are active every day in uh, operations. Some of them are sitting in a semi-reserve state or whatnot. But uh, for the most part, these ships are proven to still be very valuable and still very capable. And it'll be hard for the U.S. Navy, I think, to find a capable design to replace them without having to uh, put some serious time and money and uh engineering work into it so thank you all for tuning in um i hope you like what you see i hope you like the little bit different format we did with this video um if you do please uh comment like subscribe share and let us know what you'd like to see in the future and until we do the next one uh, we'll catch y'all later